My name is Sean Bouchard. I'm not a dancer. I'm a game designer at the University of Southern California. This is a still from a video project by Robbie Cooper called Immersion that documents how gamers look while they're playing games. <laughs> it's actually a really interesting project. This is what I do. I create engaging experiences. I make educational games. And the idea behind educational games is really simple. On the one hand, we have kids who struggle to engage with learning in the classroom. And on the other hand, these same kids spend an extraordinary amount of time and energy playing games. So wouldn't it be great if we could somehow use games to help kids engage with learning? It seems pretty straightforward. And because games are fun, the temptation is to think about them as motivators. You create a game, and you create some educational content, and then you sort of wrap the game around the educational content to make it palatable. And this doesn't work. In fact, this is basically what the educational games industry has been doing for the last 30 years, and so far we have failed to revolutionize education. And there's a reason, and this is the reason. <laughs> Chocolate-covered broccoli. Mmm. I'll be honest, this just makes me wish I had some chocolate without so much broccoli in it, <laughs> which is counterproductive. Chocolate-covered broccoli is the term that Dr. Jacob Hapgood uses to describe exactly this problem. It's what you get when you try to cram games and education together. And it doesn't work. In fact, the reason that we went to games in the first place, that engagement, you lose that as soon as you interrupt the experience with educational content. It destroys the immersion. It doesn't work. So, you can probably guess by the fact that I'm standing here talking to you, this isn't a dead end for educational games. But it does mean we're going to have to rethink some things. So let's go back to the beginning. Let's think about games. This is a game. Some of you might know it. It's called Civilization. It's a very successful franchise. Uh, has sold a lot of copies over the last 20 years. It's on its fifth iteration. Unfortunately, in this presentation, all you can see is a pretty picture, which is a shame, because the most important aspect of a game is the fact that it moves. And it doesn't move like a film. A film sort of moves on its own. A game moves because you poke at it. It's a dynamic system. Think about an ecosystem, okay? The individual bits, bits and pieces, the, the plants and animals, aren't what's interesting about an ecosystem. What's interesting is how they interact with one another and how the whole system changes over time. I have some bad news about dynamic systems. And the bad news is that dynamic systems are really, really bad at conveying static information. Static information is how we're used to thinking about educational content, because that's what we put in books. But if we want to create compelling educational games, we're going to have to think about educational content differently. And there's good news. And the good news is that education and games go hand in hand. Uh, Rafe Koster, who is a luminary in the game design community, wrote a book called The Theory of Fun. And Koster's theory is that fun is really just learning that's structured in a particular way. I highly recommend you go out and read this book. It's, it's very interesting, it's very compelling. The bottom line is that all of the time that designers put into making a game fun, they're also making it more educational. Games are fundamentally about learning. It's just that Specifically, they're about learning how to play the game. And this is where we see the problem with chocolate-covered broccoli, is that it assumes that the game and the educational content are two different things. 
We need to shake that assumption. What we need to do is we need to have games that are built out of real-world dynamic systems, the systems that we want to teach. So let's go back to that ecosystem. Let's make a game out of the ecosystem. We're going to start with a simulation. We're going to build up on that. We're going to abstract it. We might tweak it a little bit. We're going to make it fun. And then we're going to give it to somebody, and they're going to play it. Do you know how you play a game? The first thing you do is you take some kind of an action. And then you see how the system changes as a result of that action. And then you take another action. And this time, you try to predict what the result is going to be, how that's going to change the system. And then you get a goal. And the goal is to get the system to a particular state. Now you have to work backwards. Now you have to come up with a sequence of actions that's going to get you there. And the first time you do it, it doesn't work. So you didn't understand enough about the system. But now you have more information. And now you have a new idea. So you try it again. And this time it does work. And that feels pretty good. And now you have a new goal. And the new goal is just a little bit more complicated than the old goal. By playing the game, you learn how the system works. You can't help it. That's what playing the game is. This is true for all games. We don't have to limit ourselves to just ecosystems, because there are plenty of dynamic systems out there, systems that we want to teach. Math, physics, scientific theory, uh, government, um, personal finance, uh, urban planning, history. I'm going to give you another example. Um, when I was in high school, I really struggled with history. I had a hard time in history class. Am I the only one? OK. I was that kid who struggled to engage with learning in the classroom. That was me. It turns out there are lots of names and dates. <laughs> I had a hard time staying motivated. And yet, I could sit down for hours and play this game. I loved this game. Civilization is a game about the rise and fall of nations. It's built on a dynamic system that includes settlement, expansion, population, resource allocation, government, religion, culture, technology, war. Playing this game helped me a little bit. It helped me a lot more in college when I was actually studying the rise and fall of nations. But even in high school, it gave me an anthropological context to understand those names and dates. When we talked about war breaking out over resources or land or ideology, I could relate to that because I had started wars for exactly those same reasons. <laughs> I knew how that worked. Imagine if I had had access to a game about international politics during the Cold War or the German economy following World War I. Dynamic systems. I could have aced that class, that's all I'm saying. <laughs> I want to leave you with two things. And the first is, I want you to remember that every game teaches something. Every game is based on a dynamic system. So start going out and looking at games, and looking at the systems that they're based on, and thinking about how those systems relate to the classroom. There are already a lot of games out there that can be useful. And the second thing is that I want to, to try to impress upon you just how powerful a tool games can be. The relationship between a player and a game is very different from the relationship between a reader and a book. The game challenges you. It calls you out. It makes you experiment. It makes you earn every victory. By playing a game, you create the story of your journey, and it's your journey. It's different from everyone else's. It's very personal, and it has the power to personalize a subject, to give it meaning, to make it relatable, give you a reason to want to learn more. And for a student, that can be extremely important. Thank you very much. <laughs>